Partnerships are vital to our global outreach, enabling us to take the love and hope of Jesus Christ to those who need it most. Our Boots on the Ground Partnership Program physically ministers to those in desperate situations all over the world. The Israel Partnership furthers Kim's legacy of outreach to Israel and Jewish people worldwide. We invite you to become a partner today. Join us today and be part of a community that inspires hope, brings restoration to life and often healing from the past. Together we can make a difference and we thank you for your ongoing support. something on their face, do you think? Hello everyone, welcome to House of Destiny. This is your boy, Dr. Charlie C.J. Jordan, a.k.a. Charles of the Ritz. Welcome to Perspectives of the Prophetic. Guys, we're going to talk about dreams and visions. Because the other day while I was in prayer, God began to speak to me. And this is what he said. He said, I am about to come up on not only my people, but he is about to come up on different individuals, okay? And they will begin to have dreams and have visions. And God is saying, and, 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 you know, he, he's, he's really, really being very serious about it, okay? And I don't know why I had to say that, but he's being very serious about it because we are truly, truly living in the last days. We are truly living in the last moments. And guys, this harvest is so valuable. This harvest, harvest is so huge that it is truly time for us to step into everything that God has called us to step into. So he gave me this word, everyone. Okay. And, you know, he took me to the book of Joel chapter two. And, you know, if you haven't read the whole chapter of Joel chapter two, look, read it. Go to Joel chapter two, start at verse one and read all the way down. Because when you read about the day of the Lord, it's turbulent. How I many know that the times that we are living in right now are super turbulent? You know, when you read Joel and, and, and then you compare it to what's happening now, guys, we are truly approaching the day of the Lord. Okay? We are truly appro uh, approaching it. But we, the remnant of God, we understand the fear of God. We understand and we know what the day of the Lord is all about. Because, see, we are acquainted with his spirit. We are one with his spirit. And we know that his perfect love casts out all fear. So we have no fear. We have no worries. Because we are walking with him. And he has called and anointed and appointed us and gifted us with the things that we need to be able to reap. This glorious harvest, you see? So, look, read Joel chapter 2 and read the whole chapter, okay? But he took me down to this glorious verse in chapter 2, which we know very well. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. He said, and it shall come to pass afterward, after all of this that is happening in chapter 2. Look, you know, that's why I'm telling you, read the whole chapter. He says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. He didn't say some flesh. He didn't say just my remnant that's waiting in the upper room only. No, he said all flesh. You remember this because Peter quoted it on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. When he said and quoted this scripture, okay, when this sound of a mighty rushing wind came upon the 120 in that upper room, and then they begin to speak with not unknown tongues, but with other tongues. It was powerful, powerful. And look, this is about to go down. So he said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy all flesh remember that's the key word your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions 
And guys, let me just say this. When he says, old men, young men, he's not leaving women out. He's not leaving ladies. He's not leaving you out. Okay, so please don't think, oh, okay, so only boys and men are supposed to dream dreams and have visions. No, uh-uh. God is out of respect of persons, okay? All right, so he said, young men shall, now your old men shall dream dreams, young men shall see visions. And this is what God showed me, that he is about to come upon all flesh, so there will be Oh, men, there will be gentlemen and women. They will begin to have dreams. And we're talking about agnostics. We're talking about atheists. We're talking about unbelievers that don't know Christ, that hate Christ, that said that Christ doesn't exist, that there's no God. But God said his spirit shall come upon all flesh and we will have atheists agnostics, those that hate God, they will begin to have dreams. And in these dreams, these dreams will be so vivid, the Spirit of God says, they will be so vivid that they shall shake in their sleep. They shall be likened unto having night sweats, and they shall wake up, and they shall begin to cry out, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. There will be conversions that would take place as they were dreaming about Christ and the goodness of the gospel of Christ and the gospel of the kingdom. Guys, get with me and agree with me today that this is definitely what God is going to do. He shared this with me and I feel so passionate about it. Do you remember the prophetic word that Prophet Kim got, my beloved mentor, our prophet, when he said that ISIS members, those men and women in the Middle East, will begin to have road to con uh, road to Damascus type conversions, and guys, it began to happen. There are many videos where women, Middle Eastern women, Middle Eastern men, are having dreams. And they're having dreams about Jesus. And they're waking up, calling on the name of Jesus, and being converted right there in their bedroom. It's happening, everybody. That's why I'm so passionate about this and so excited about this word. And, and look, look, this is what he says. He said, your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. We're talking about young people that is not serving God. We're talking about young people that are caught up in the occult. But all of a sudden, they shall have a vision from the Lord. And when they have this vision, their eyes will be open, just like Paul wrote to the Ephesians. When he wrote to the Ephesians and said, this is what I pray, that the eyes of your understanding will be open and it will be enlightened. And you will know without a doubt the glorious inheritance the those of us who are saints in Christ Jesus. Guys, this is what God has promised. This is going to go down. Your young men shall see visions. Okay, so this is so exciting. So when God gave me this word, he said, now tell my people that some dreams and some visions are to be shared, but others are not to be shared. Some dreams and some visions are to be shared with only the one person that will receive it and pray over it and wait like you will wait for the manifestation of it. Because there are some dreams, there are some visions that will bring about envy, that will bring about like, oh, who do this person think she or he is? I got scripture to prove it. Let's go to scripture. Joseph's dreams. I'm going to talk about the first dream that he had. Let's go to Genesis chapter 37. Verses 3 through 8. Listen to this. Now Israel loved Joseph. Talking about Jacob. Is Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tonic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, 
they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Listen to that key word. They could not speak peaceably to him, not about him only, but to him. So that means that most of the time, maybe all the time, we weren't there, but the Bible is clear when it says they couldn't speak peaceably to him, that they really didn't have anything nice to say to or about Joseph. Okay? They didn't have nice things to say to him or nice things to say about him. So there was contention. There was envy. There was hatred. It says it. They hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now, Joseph had a dream. So let's, let's, let's stop before I go into the dream. Think about Joseph and his brothers, the way they treated him. Think about Joseph knowing that Jacob, his father, Israel, loved him more than he loved his brothers. So Joseph probably had a little bit of an attitude, had a little chip on his shoulders. Hey, it's normal. We're human, right? So that even brought about more contention between Joseph and his brothers. So now Joseph has this dream. Now Joseph had a dream. And he told it to his brothers. And they hated him even more. This is the dream. So he said to them, look, please hear this dream which I have dreamt. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. So look, this hatred is building up. He had this dream. Should he have said or told his brothers this dream? Should he? Because you know where it led. Okay, let's go to the second dream. Genesis 37, verses 9 through 11, says it like this. Then he dreamt still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamt another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. He's speaking about the father his father, his mother, and his 11 brothers, the 11 stars, bowed down to me. That's clearly the interpretation of what he saw in this dream, right? So he told it to his fathers and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamt? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you. So he had the same reaction. But Jacob, Israel, being a man of prayer, being a man of God, the Bible says, and his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. So in other words, his father, though he was upset about it, though he was moved to a little bit of envy about it, but he stopped because he was a man of the spirit of God. And he said, you know what? I'm going to keep this in mind. Another way that I like to look at that is this. He kept it in his heart and he prayed about it. It never left him. This is something that stayed with him. You see, Joseph shared this dream with the right, with the right person. Okay. Now his brothers, what happened? What did they do? They got so ticked off at him that they, 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 they threw him in a pit. Okay. Dug a pit and they were actually going to kill him. But since Reuben, the one that could hear, okay, I believe it's Reuben is the one that can hear. Okay. I believe that is true. All right. As a matter of fact, let me, uh, uh, search it out here real quick because I want to be uh, 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 right as far as doctrine here real quick. So give me a moment real quick. So yes, Reuben, his name means to see. So it was Reuben that could see that if they did something bad to Joseph, it would be bad for all of them. So it was because of his 
insight and being able to see that they sold him into slavery. But you see, he shared his dream with his brothers and his brothers did that to him. But his father, okay, kept it in his mind. He interceded over it. He prayed about it. There are some dreams. This is simply what I'm saying. There are visions and some dreams that some people would have, but you must use discernment on who to share those dreams or visions with. Why? Because they are edgy and it could bring about contention, uh, 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 jealousies, okay, envy. And you must share it with someone that you trust that will pray with you, okay? Keep it in their mind and in their heart. And then you will know when to release that dream or that vision, you see? So his father knew this, all right? Let me tell you guys something. I've had some dreams, okay? When we were in Detroit, man, when we went to Detroit, when Prophet Kim and I, when we went to Detroit, Detroit truly became our Bethel. You see, Detroit to us was first and foremost a city of, of recklessness. It was a city of crime. As a matter of fact, when we first got there, uh, um, you guys remember that they used to have uh, pre-Halloween, they used to have this what they call Hell's Night or Satan's Night or something. I, I, I keep forgetting, which is good. I don't know. I don't need to remember what it was called, but we got there and we prophesied J-E-S-U-S -S is in effect with Jesus by our side. We will put the devil in check. We prophesied that proclamation on uh, hell's night or uh, really the night before hell's night. And then when hell's night happened the next night, nothing happened because it was in the Detroit Free Press that it said hell's night was put in check. You see, so Detroit was known for a city that had plenty crime. It wasn't a very nice city. It was a blue collar city, nothing wrong with that. But we know that Detroit was a city of crime. So Detroit was a place that we really didn't want to go to. But God says, go to Detroit and dwell there. So Detroit became our Bethel. It was no longer Luz. It wasn't a place of pain, of crime. It wasn't a place of, 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 of ugliness. It became the place where God dwelled and he has always dwelled there. And we began to have visions and dreams. I had so many dreams there. I've had three dreams to this day that I can't release. I can't release this dream or these three dreams because there's an appointed time for each of us to release what it is that God has for us to release. There's an appointed time. I'm, and I'm going to prove it here in scripture. Okay. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 12 and we're only going to read verse four. Okay. Daniel 12 verse four it says it like this, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. So he told Daniel when now Daniel had all of these visions, you know, these visions started in chapter nine, man, chapter nine. And, and then it goes all the way to 12. And he had all of these powerful, powerful encounters with the spirit of God. And then God told him to seal this up until an appointed time. Because I looked up that word, these two words, run to and fro and knowledge. OK, shall increase. Look, run to and fro definitely means travel, but information will be readily accessible. So in other words, this running to and fro is, is now exactly the time that we are living in because information travel is well, it has increased. It has truly, truly increased. You can get information just by typing it in, you know, Google and stuff like that. You got the information just like that. Okay. And then I like that word knowledge. Okay. Shall increase because the word knowledge here in Daniel is the same word that is used in Hosea when it says my people die 
for the lack of knowledge, not just natural or, 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 or knowledge only or just knowledge only, but that word also means, the Hebrew word means perception. Okay, so in summation, this is what I wrote. In these last days that we are in, revelation knowledge will be the sign to see when it's time to release dreams and visions that God has given unto you to wait for that appointed time. Because we have to perceive, we have to walk and, and live and abide in perception. You see? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that's coming from God opens up perception because you are now hearing and seeing. Because when God speaks, you not only hear, but you can see. And so this these are the times that we're living in. That's why I love when God gave me this word. That's why I'm so passionate about it, guys. He is about to pour out upon all flesh. Your sons, your daughters will begin to have visions. They will prophesy. And you, you may say, well, my son is not serving God. My son is in Hollywood. He's doing all that silliness that they're doing in Hollywood in the entertainment industry. Begin to pray and proclaim these scriptures over your loved ones that are not serving God. Said say to them and said to that circumstance and that situation, you shall see with the precept of God, you shall begin to see what God wants you to see. And when you see it, you will become the very thing that he is showing you. Proclaim it over them. Proclaim it and believe it within your heart. Because you see, God, okay, diligently rewards those who come to him and seek him diligently. When you are doing this, you are diligently seeking the Lord and saying, Lord God, look at my son, look at my daughter, Open their eyes so that they can see and know you the way I see and know you. Guys, this is going to happen. It's going to happen. So there are some visions, some dreams that you are not to release until God tells you to. He said it to Daniel. If he could say it to Daniel, he is saying it to us today. He is saying it to us. Guys, this is one of the things that I love about Prophet Kim's ministry. This is one of the first things that he told me. He said, Charlie, when I first started prophesying and I first started, first started flowing in the, and, and, you know, in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and, and ministering over people's lives and getting their phone numbers and getting their names and all of this stuff. You see, I had to, I had to build my, not my confidence, but I had to build my faith in the fact that what God showed me, okay, I will only release what it is that he wants me to release. And God allowed me to do this. Why? Because this is what God wants. Why? Because God wants to show you all that he wants to show you. But some things are not to be said. Some things are not to be revealed until God's timing. Here's a perfect example. We were in a church in Texas. I'm not going to say where, but it was just Prophet Kim and I. And we had ministered that night. It was the first meeting of these three nights that we were going to minister in this city here in, in Texas. And, and, and the first night was over and Kim was in the pastor's office and it was just me. So I went to Kim's product table to check to see how the product sales was going to pick up any cash that was made. And when I was on my way back from the product table, this huge burly man stopped me. And he began to weep and he said, I must speak with the prophet. And I said, well, well generally, my friend, when Kim is done, man, he, 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 the, the Holy Ghost has, you know, has lifted off of him. He's done. And Kim really don't want to speak to people in the voice of Kim. He loves to speak to people with God's voice, with his knowledge, with his wisdom. And I said, so, he, and he said, no, but I must, I must. He was so adamant to see the prophet. So I said, okay, but just wait right here. And I went into the pastor's office and I told Kim this. And Kim said, bring him in. 
Now, this was a big dude, man. He was big. He was burly, man. He was a big Texas redneck. Let me just keep it real, okay? A big dude. But you could see that he loved God with all of his heart. And so Kim said, what is it? What can I do for you? What is it that you need? And the man began to tell his story about his daughter. His daughter is mixed up with a man that is abusive. Physically, okay, verbally, very abusive man, okay, abuses her sexually. He went, th he started saying all of these things and he was, and I just, and, and, and this is what he was saying. And, and I just know he's wrong. He's wrong for my daughter. And I don't, really don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. And as he was saying this, Kim grabbed his, his forearm like this, pulled him to, to uh, uh, himself, and he whispered something in the man's ear. And this big old dude just flopped on Kim. Kim, hey, guys, help me, help me. So me and the pastor had to help hold this guy up, man, because this guy just flopped into Kim's arms. And we, we, we held him up and we set him down. And this guy was just weeping, weeping now, you know, more than what he was in the hallway. And then Kim went over and began to minister to him, but he whispered in his ear. We didn't hear anything. We stood back and the guy stopped crying and then Kim blessed him and said, God is with you. Know that your daughter is going to be okay. And the guy got up and he thanked Kim and he thanked God again and he left. So now Kim and I were driving to the hotel. Okay. Now the hotel was about an hour from the uh, venue where we were doing the meetings. And you know, Kim used to joke about this. He used to call me Mr. Inquisitive. And I, and I am because when I first started traveling with Kim and even on to the day that, uh, 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 he first went down, I, I would always ask questions. I would ask question after question. I was, uh, I was always inquisitive to, Hey, Kim, how did you do this? And you know, so I, I was like that. Okay. And so I'm riding in the car and it's very quiet. The prophet is tired. Okay. And I, I was chipping at the bit. Man, I want to know what the heck did he say to this guy? So I finally said, Kim, looked over at it because I was driving, y'all. What did you say to this guy? Man, this guy, man, he was so heavy, man. He was like a ton of bricks, man. What do you say? Kim smiled a little bit and he felt the release to tell me at least this part. He said this, he said, when I pulled him to, to me and I whispered in his ear, I told him, God forgives you for yesterday is over. He forgives you for all that you've done. And that's what broke the man. So look guys, what happened was, is that this guy would abuse his daughter, would abuse her sexually, physically, and verbally. This is what he would do. And, and so it, it, it's just, it, it greatly affected him. But when Kim released that word, when he released that word and he spoke to him, it delivered him. And Kim said, your daughter will be fine. See, Kim said it took him several years to understand, to understand that. And since he, and when he got this understanding, that's when God would show him more because God knew that Kim would only say what God wanted him to say. And Kim would only release it when it was time to be released. So God is saying this to you and I today. Your dreams will increase. Your visions will increase. And there, there will be some things that you will see. Okay? There will be some things that you will see that you are not to reveal until an appointed time. There will be some things that you will see, that you will dream and you will have visions of, that you are to share it with someone that will agree with you, won't envy you, but they will pray along with you for the discernment and for the manifestation of it. This is what God is saying at this time. So get ready because God is about to begin to truly come upon all flesh 
And there are people that will begin to have dreams that you wouldn't think they would have a dream of such, but it will happen. And it will happen with you as well upon all flesh. Okay, so I hope this message blessed you. And uh, look, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give right now. Information is strolling along the bottom right there. Okay, this is a strong and a powerful promise from God. This is about to happen. Read Joel chapter two. Read the whole thing and you'll see that everything in chapter two speaks about the day of the Lord. This is about to go down. There's so much turmoil and God has allowed all of this to get to this point that he is about to move. We are positioned, we are anointed, we have been appointed, and we have the gifts and the calling to go forth in his name to reach those that are trapped in darkness. So this is our hour, everybody. Last week I was saying, uh, well, on one of my other uh, uh, teachings, I was talking about this is our time. This is our time. It's from that powerful prophetic utterance that came forth back in 2010. We were in Long Island, New York at Upper Room Christian Tabernacle. It's the two clocks uh, um, word that came forth. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go to the Kim Clement YouTube page and just just type in two clocks. You'll hear that very powerful word. OK, but this is our time, everybody. This is our time to step into all that God has called us to be a part of okay so information is strolling along the bottom you can give there if you don't have anything to give like the prophet used to say sew a button and and this is what i've added to this too if you have a problem with giving money okay sow a word of affirmation sow a word of faith a word of love to someone even to us here at house of destiny because your words of love is like an unto seeds of love words are like an unto seed OK, if it's a bad word, it's a bad seed and you're going to reap a bad harvest. But if it's a good word, if it's a word of love, then you're going to reap a good harvest. And God says that when you sow a seed of love, when you sow a good seed, he will give seed to that sower. So let's sow right now. OK. All right. So, hey, I love you guys. I want you guys to know that you are truly somewhere in the future and you look so much better than all of this that's going on around you. And when J-E-S-U-S is in effect, Jesus is truly by your side. We put that devil in check. This is the risk. I love you guys. See you next time on Perspectives of the Prophetic. Peace.